Hello there. A uh, very good evening and welcome to Let's Talk Politics. I'm your host, Eddie Lane, and of course, I'm joined by the Honorable Joseph Hamilton, the Minister of Labor. Minister, good evening and welcome to the program. Okay, Eddie, good evening. Thank you very much for having me here. As I always say, this program is really dedicated to highlighting the progress and development taking place on the, the People's Progressive Party Civic Administration. But at the same time, we use the opportunity to debunk the lies and misinformation that are ever so often being peddled by a desperate opposition, APNU, AFC. Uh, Minister, this evening, I want to focus primarily on uh, the security sector a little bit, um, not in the context of a policy um, position per se, but you know the constant bickering, the constant unfounded attacks that the police often face um, from the opposition. Um, sometimes it's 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 sad when when you examine what is happening, you know. Uh, and one gets the impression that ever so often it seems as though the opposition is really in the corner of um, those who are on the wrong side of the law as against supporting the fight against crime. I'm gonna give you an opportunity to give some broad opening comments on this, and then we're gonna get down to the nitty gritties. Well, the thing is, you have to understand um, where the opposition is coming from. The opposition role, they see themselves, uh, not to oppose, but to create instability. That, that is, you know, a normal opposition, they oppose government policy and they counter that with policies that they believe might be better for the development of a country. But if you check the APNU AFC as an opposition party, their role they see it as disrupting. Is not opposing anymore, uh, disrupting and seeking to fan flames, seeking to create conditions that can lead to some instability in the country. That is how they see it. Um, and that is the reason why the issue about the security sector, they would not support and they wouldn't want uh, the security sector to function in a way whereby it is arresting crime. Because as they see it, every crime that happened is something that creates fear and doubt and instability. So they have no concern about the person that the criminality has affected or who was brutalized or maybe killed by the criminality. For them, that action creates condition for them to point to how unstable the country is or is becoming. So, so that, is the, that is the program. And you would note everything, there would be no comment and normally, you know, Eddie, there is no comment about progress. There is no comment about development. The only time they come into the conversation is when there is some action or something that stir uh, the Guyanese people in a negative way. So they try to see if they could get traction um, as regards uh, those matters. You will recall, Eddie, they had incidents early this year where for whatever reason, you have had several teenage girls who had left their mother's home for all different reasons. Instead of empathizing with the affected families, the opposition, they were using that to create conditions to suggest that people are disappearing by the dozens in Guyana. And think about it as a parent, and you, you are a parent. 
uh, more so parents with girl children. And you are fed with a diet that suggests that your child, your teenage child, is likely to disappear. When the fact is, what happened is that most, if not all, of the young, young ladies, they made contact with families. Uh, they were found by families. When I'm at in some instances, they were staying at other family members without the knowledge of their parents. But with all of that, with all the explanation, with all the evidence before the opposition, they still sought to create mischief by suggesting that, you know, the PVP is back and our children, they are disappearing. So that is how they see themselves. Nothing progressive, nothing developmental, nothing that is uh, positive, nothing that speaks to the welfare and well-being of the Guyanese people. That is not their interest. You would hear them saying, okay, we have, been, uh, we have had overseas visitors coming to review our housing project. And we have built several hundred of houses already in a year and some months. You wouldn't hear them say, okay, with all that we have done, we should have done more. <laughs> you follow me? <laughs> you wouldn't hear them say that because that is not their interest. If we had a situation where, because we didn't do what we have done in the housing sector, and you had people who, for whatever reason, they were losing their houses and they were being put out of houses, that would have been a good thing for them to jump on, uh, to fan the flames of it, that we are responsible for the dilemma of these people and we did not do anything to protect them. So I'm saying everything. And that's why I'm at a place whereby nothing astonishes me, nothing shocks me about what the opposition say or what they do because the opposition is not a progressive opposition none of them that are part of the cabal there. And secondly, and most importantly, your, your viewers and listeners must recognize it, yes. They don't see themselves ever attaining power. So it is not for them to do anything to present themselves as a government in waiting. You, you know, they have already determine in totality that they're dead meat. <laughs> so, you know, they determine that. By everything they're doing, they have convinced themselves. And, you know, we don't need to convince them anymore. They have convinced themselves that based on everything they know, they will never ever get back into power under any type of permutation or any type of name. And therefore, recognizing that, I cannot do anything to cause the Guyanese people to see me as a party, a government in waiting. The only thing I can do is to be mischievous. And that is where they're at. And it wouldn't change as for them being better. It can only and will only get worse. You know, you put that quite nicely, and I want us now to zero in on some specifics in the manner in which uh, they are attacking and they're attempting to, I mean, unsuccessfully so, to, to discredit the Guyana police force, to divide the Guyana police force, and to use um, some of their political elements, many of whom claimed it to be um, independent, like the Paul Slows and so on. And we'll talk about, about, about that a little later. But, you know, every killing, every time someone dies, and, and I want to say this, 
as a citizen of this country, as a human being, as someone associated with the government, that we, the People's Progressive Party Civic, as a party and as a government, values every single life. So I want to make that point first, uh, Minister. And to add that every single incident where someone would have died, um, particularly if it's by involving the use of a gun, whether by criminals, whether the police shoot criminals, there is a line that the PNC APNU AFC is pulling especially if that person is an Afro-Guyanese, is to go back to create the impression that the person, somehow the PVP has a hand in it. But very, ever so often, when the investigations are done and are concluded, you find that the, the, the reasons why these things happen is either the person was robbed and killed or the person may have found himself on the wrong side of the law in a confrontation with the police so that everything becomes a political um, killing. Then when the police acts and the police arrest criminals, whether the criminals were associated with the APNU AFC, those white color criminals who were in office, who were stealing the people's money and who were buying bangles and beds and bed sheets and bracelets. Every time one of them is arrested, then you hear there is political interference in the Guyana police force. And Minister, we can go back. We can go back to the history of this country and we can recall who were associated with those who had Buxton on the siege, who infiltrated that community and held that community hostage. And we can, we can track it back to those who declare criminals as freedom fighters. But you always have these same people trying to paint the Guyana police force and to paint the PVP somehow interfering in the work of the Guyana police force. Well, the thing is, the thing is, Eddie, again, the police successes, they see it, and I suspect rightfully so, as the successes of the PVP and its policies. And therefore, they wouldn't want to and they don't want to see the police succeeding because that success by extension goes to the credit of the policy as regards the security sector of the People's Progressive Party civil, uh, government. So when you have things that are negative in the security sector, that is good for them because they can play it up. Even though they will know that the circumstances of a killing, what it is and what it was, they would want to style it differently. I am told, and I thought I saw a post somewhere, where the death of the doctor in the early stages became a political matter. At least it was propagated that way by elements that are, um, that are connected to the, to the APNO. And further, political and, 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 and ethnic racial, because uh, as this progressive uh, Afro-Guyanese young man, somehow we have an interest of getting him out of the way. So as stupid as that is, there are persons out there who are ignorant enough, Eddie, who will believe things like that. And no way you can tell them differently. So they will continue to challenge the police and its work. They would continue to always look out for any infringement. Uh, of the police force, and they will continue to say negative things about the police force because they see it as negatively affecting the government. That is their that is their role. That is their purpose. 
And everything they do, everything they say will be styled that way. Um, so no support will be given to the police force, none whatsoever. Uh, with all these so-called bright um, security czars they say they have around them, they will not give any uh, support to the police force because that is not important to them. And we as a government, we have to give full support and all the support that we can give to the police force so that the police force can do their work, so that the police force can be effective in arresting crime and criminality. And that is what we have to do. We have to continue to do that because the police force successes are in the interest of all Guyanese, all sane Guyanese, I will say. Um, will continue to support the police force. Um, you know, and Minister, what is interesting, let us take, for example, I wanna bring two critical points out here. One, that we hear them talking about reform of the Guyana police force and accusing the government of not ensuring that there is reform in the Guyana police force. They had an opportunity for five years. And what did they do? They were involved, and the people who they claim, who, you know, who are now their experts, their security experts, and their backers, were busy writing $10 million checks or were collecting $10 million checks for writing of, of standing orders for the Guyana police force. And, operating procedures, et cetera, and doing nothing. So they were using reform as a cash cow. And there was a report. There was a report that, that, that made a number of recommendations in terms of reform of the Ghana police force, and they shelved that report. It was the APNU AFC in government that didn't give the community policing groups funding. As a matter of fact, Ramjitan took away vehicles from some of the community policing groups that were supporting the police in the fight against crime. And now these very guys are coming and what are they doing? So clearly in government and out of government, they had absolutely no interest really in supporting the police and, and to, to aid in the fight against crime. One has to ask the question, uh, Minister, why? Why is the PNC not interested in government and out of government to fight crime in this country? Well, the thing is, the thing is, you know, I don't know what they were interested in in government, <coughs> other than making themselves wealthy. You know, whichever sector you look at, Eddie, I mean, we're focusing on the security sector. Whichever sector you look at, where Granger and his group in government. They did nothing with it and for it. In the early stage of their government, they played up the um, report that was done by the consultant, I think, out of UK. And that was a big um, conversation as regards how they will effectively and efficiently use the report. But the fact is, nothing flowed from that. Uh, nothing flowed from that. And the, 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 instead of doing that, you had um, former commissioners and former deputy commissioners who were giving po political direction to the police force. So the police force was not independent under no circumstances when Granger, they were in government. The police force, and we have a lot of evidence to prove that the police force was uh, politically um, directed. We just have to quickly go back to the period between the um, after elections and the conclusion of the elections, and you will see all the things that, have, that happened during that period, uh, the Ashman building and all the other issues. 
uh, the political hand that was involved in the direction of the police force. So the police force on the APNU AFC, the only purpose and reason they serve is to be a political tool on behalf of, 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 of the um, APNU AFC government. And they had no interest in reforming the police force to be uh, professional and independent and all the issues. Because an independent police force would have rebuffed their political hand. So they had no interest in, in all of that. And of course, importantly, whilst Ramjatan was uh, named Minister of Security, all of us are aware that he had no control over the security sector. One, uh, Winston Felix, is the man who controlled right through the period the security sector. Ramjatan was just a passenger there. And, you know, it was just a passenger there. And, and you know, it proved the, fact, the point is he was such a passenger that there are reports that suggest he himself was wiretapped as minister. <laughs> but he himself, the minister, was wiretapped. You know, so it shows uh, the fact that he had no control. Um, he had no relationship. Uh, he wasn't able to properly manage the security sector because he was undermined by his colleagues. He was undermined by his colleagues right through the period. And he is a total failure as regards managing the security sector. And you know, I, I, on, on the same note too, when, when one look at what, um, what were their plans? You know, Ramjatan, remember Ramjatan came out and made a huge announcement of more dogs and ponies on the road. That was his crime fighting strategy. You know, that was his crime fighting strategy. The, 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 the cameras that were put up that I understand they had absolutely no access to, right? Those were his initiatives, but nothing of substance. People were still being robbed and killed and murdered on the, the AFC, and they had all the answers in opposition before they came into office in, in 2015. They said they had the experts who are going to ensure. They promised a crime, well, they promised a lot of things. They, they promised a crime-free society. They promised, well, they promised a good life, um, which turned out to be a good life. Um, so they promised a lot of things. But I want to take you back a little bit, Minister, because... The attack on the Guyana police force, the, the support, the open support, because these guys, every time a criminal is gone down, the police is accused of extrajudicial killing. Even if the police is injured by the criminal, is shot by the criminal, and the police kill the criminal or the criminal is injured, the police is accused of somehow um, using extrajudicial forces in their efforts. So clearly the APNU AFC or the PNC or whatever they call themselves are in the corner of the, criminal, the, the criminals. And this is historical. This is historical. Because we can recall. Go, go ahead, go ahead, Minister. Again, we go back to every crime and every criminal activity creates instability and fear. And so they see themselves, they see the criminals as a partner to them. You follow me? So they don't want the police force to get rid of the criminal via the court and using all the means to get rid. The less criminal we have, less criminality we have, is less tension and fear among the citizens of them, less potential for instability. So they will not support that. They don't want that because they see the criminals as a support base in a sense for their uh, activities of making the country ungovernable. That, that, that is the, 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 the issue. So yes, they will continue to support the, the work of the criminals. Yes, they will continue to malign uh, the police force, 
yes, they will continue to, to challenge every action of the police force because the more the police arrest crime is less potential for instability. So. But, and, and you know, again, and I have to go back, I keep going back to the historical context and we recall the crime wave. We recall the draping of Lyndon London's casket with the Guyana flag and the PNC officials who attended that funeral and who hailed him uh, you know, as freedom fighters and, and who hailed those who escaped from prison that, that, that notorious um, March Day jailbreak who wreak havoc in this country, killed hundreds of innocent people probably. They were hailed as freedom fighters. We recall those who were going into Buxton backlands and training criminal elements. Those who were aligned with the PNC, the APNU AFC now. And by the fact, there are recordings out there that implicated leaders in the, in the PNC and, and one man who sat one time at, as commissioner of police were attempting to plant drugs on a lady. Do you recall that story? So they have a history of associating themselves with and support for criminal elements. So, you know, we should not be surprised, but we have to highlight and we have to let people understand that those who are parading themselves as though they're looking out for their interests, the reality is they don't want to see the police put a dent on crime and criminality. And as you rightly said, because it benefits them, they create fear in the society and they get talking points because they have nothing, nothing of substance to contribute to the development of this country and to, to the furthering and, and, and bettering of the lives of the people. So I, I don't know, maybe, maybe very soon we might have to find a different label for APNU AFC because clearly <laughs> their support lies with the criminal elements and criminality and making the country ungovernable. As one man said, um, and I, whenever I call his name, I always say, Dr. Rodney may be turning in his grave when you call the name of, 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 of this hypocrite um, that sits in the US ever so often, David Hines, who said to the people at Buxton at that meeting that they should, they should make this, this government uncomfortable by all means. And he keep repeating that statement. That's a statement that also may very well be directed to criminal elements to do what you have to do to ensure that Guyana is unstable. Then you have the Rickford Burks and the others who push their racist agenda, who push their divisive rhetoric, and who are promoting crime and criminality. Rickford, Rickford Burke waits for every opportunity to use the police of killing an extrajudicial killing, even when the police kill criminals in the act of committing crimes. Well, Eddie, let me say this. Eh? Let me say this in conclusion as we wind down here is this. You know what is always important for me in all of this? Is that the Guyanese people are wiser now. <laughs> that's, you know? And that's the reason why they will not get the type of traction they see. Today, 2021 is not 1990-something and 2000 and 2006. I have always argued that because of the stewardship of the People's Progressive Party, Savior, more people have accomplished. And therefore, I always make this point. When a man, he has a house, Eddie, it's difficult for you to influence him to go burn somebody's house because he has a house. Person who have a car, it's difficult to encourage them to go and vandalize somebody's car because they have a car. And therefore, the more people's well being and their welfare and their economic circumstances uh, develop, it is less traction they will have, less. Uh, the audience is becoming smaller as they speak to. Because you know that, and I'm sure many persons by the 
dozens would have approached you the fact that you have a relationship with, with, with PVP about their interest in a house lot or their interest in a young professional home or their interest in a core home. That is what people are concerned about. Their interest in a piece of agricultural land somewhere. That is a concern. And as minister, I have people, you know, by the dozens, who is seeking for you to point them to a place where they can help themselves to progress. Whether the lands and surveys, whether CHNPA, so whether the a small business buru, that is the conversation people are having. Young, old, middle aged seeking to see how recognizing Eddie, that this government is doing immaculate work. People have recognized, uh, listen, this train has left the station. Nothing or nobody can stop the train. So I, as a citizen, I have to get on the developmental train. And that is my what keeps me going. That is what always caused me to say, uh, as much as we challenge these, um, these Lincoln poops, I am always confident that the people of this country, they have a great understanding of all the political dynamics and they will not allow themselves to be misled. They will not allow themselves to be involved in activities that are inimical to their own interests and benefit. So that is my consolation in all of this. And that, you know, but we have to, as you have said when you started, we have to challenge these people every day because, um, the more, if you allow them to get away with their foolish talk, they might be able to influence some people who are easily swayed and can be easily influenced. Minister, I wanna thank you so much for joining me this evening, um, you know, to, to have this discussion because sometimes we have to like, you know, we have to highlight, we cannot allow this lie and this misinformation and this divisive rhetoric and these attacks to go unabated without responding and highlighting and debunking and put the facts on the table. We, we have to, if we don't do that, then we are contributing, we are going to be contributing to the problem that, 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 that exists in the society. But like I always say, you know, the facts are easy to access and to debunk the lies. You cannot come now and tell people about reform of the Guyana police force when you received the report and shelved it. Granger was hiding it in his bedroom. When the then leader of the opposition now, Vice President was asking for that report. He received the report in January, I think, of 2018. And at the end, in September of 2018 or 2019, is when he was actually being pushed on a meeting with, with the then opposition leader, Dr. Jack Dio, to make the report available. He was hiding it like this SOPs they're hiding now. So they can't come and tell people the lies. You can easily click two buttons on your computer and find the facts. But Minister, I want to thank you for joining me this evening. Um, and there are hey, a few So thank have a good rest of the evening. For having me. Same to you. Thank you very much. And to our viewers and listeners, thanks for watching. Have a good rest of the evening. Bye for now.